when I saw the article you sent it, I'm like, oh, Yellow crap. shirts Which and one? behind oh, the oh, table. Wait. We need equal numbers of you on each side of the podium. <laughs> here. The here. director. But this is a press conference, so. Let me sit next to you. Stay here. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Thank you. So if you can sit here. Well, I'll be here. Is that better? Yes. All right. Well, we can't hold it because. Smile, everybody. All right. Good. Good smile. Smile. Tell us a joke in the list. You want me to tell you a joke? I think Steve, you should tell us a joke. Can you tell us a joke? Yeah, but I can't. There's girls around. Well, welcome. Yeah, what's the best for us? Let's give three cheers for the Consumer Coalition for Affordable Power. Yay! Can we have a little bit more enthusiasm? Yay! You guys look great. Now, I want you to all say together, no blank checks. Okay, say it like three times. No blank checks, no blank checks. One, no two, three, blank. go. No, no blank checks. No blank checks. No blank checks. There we go. One, two, three, you're right in front of my face. No blank checks. No blank checks. No blank checks. No blank checks. Hey, this hides my face. Great. <laughs> Oh, yes. Well, Ruth oh, Flattery will get you everywhere, though. Have you been to the eye doctor lately? <laughs> <laughs> right now, I want you to read. Let me move over. Can you hold it here so you're not going to say that? Yeah. 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 Down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. Oh. 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 It's down. Mine is down. I'm gonna throw up now. Oh yeah. We might give you right back. Good morning and thank you all for being here. My name is Evelyn Liebman and I'm the Associate State Director for Advocacy for AARP New Jersey. AARP and my colleagues that you'll hear from today represent more than 1.3 million residential utility bill payers from every walk of life and corner of New Jersey. Hundreds of small business owners working to keep our main streets alive and vibrant, and more than 100 of the state's largest businesses and energy consumers, employing more than 55,000 New Jersey workers. Uh, and we are here today to announce the establishment of the New Jersey Coalition for Affordable Power. Recent weather events are forceful reminders of the essential role of reliable utility services to consumers and employers in today's world. We know that utility services are central to the health of New Jersey's economy. Yet, and unfortunately, New Jersey is home to the seventh highest electric rates for residential customers, the eighth highest for industrial customers, and the ninth highest in the country for commercial customers, posing significant problems for our families and businesses. And while many of our organizations have worked in the interests of our members for many years, we have chosen to formally establish this coalition now um, and in the face of new challenges regarding New Jersey's energy industry. Between New Jersey's utility corporations and pending legislative proposals, we, all the bill payers, are being asked to support approximately $8 billion in energy price hikes. And that's just what we know for the moment. Who knows what's going to come in tomorrow? Um, and that this is not pocket change. To put $8 billion in some perspective, the legislature is currently evaluating Governor Christie's $32.9 billion budget proposal for the coming <coughs> fiscal year. $8 billion in rate hikes is equal to a full 24% of the entire state budget. If the legislature was debating a 24% tax hike, 
for essential utility services, the conversation in these halls and throughout the community of New Jersey would be a lot different than it is now. <coughs> but the impact is much the same. Utility prices can crush those who are paying the bill. Whether it be an older retired resident living on an average $15,500 Social Security income, struggling to age in place in one of the most expensive states in the country, a manufacturer fighting to maintain operations and keep jobs in New Jersey, it's all the same. But let me, on behalf of our coalition, be clear. As you will hear, not the Afford Coalition for Affordable Power nor any of our members are opposed to improving our energy infrastructure or paying fair rates for what works. But that's the key, fair rates for what works. We call on the governor, regulators, and the legislators in this house to make sure any and all rate hike proposals are carefully and deliberately evaluated, that the company's books are fully open, and that a proper balance is reached between utility needs and consumer protection in a manner that is the most open and transparent. Uh, on the desk over there, we have some principles uh, which uh, outline what our coalition stand for. I'm not gonna read those, uh, but they're available there. And I'm now gonna introduce representatives of our coalition who will talk about that, those principles in a little more detail. Um, after we hear from our reps, uh, we'll open it up to questions. So again, thanks for coming. And let me introduce Hal Bozarth with the Chemistry Council of New Jersey. Thank you, Ed. It's a pleasure to be here uh, <clears throat> with, with our coalition. And, and many of you uh, over the years have realized that it's a rare press event and a rare coalition that brings together the manufacturing and commercial communities with Citizen Action, New Jersey PERG, uh, and AARP, all on the same side of a single issue. It's extraordinarily important for everybody to understand what that means. And that means there is unanimity within the groups representing those people who will pay for $4 billion in rate increases are on the same side. We need to find a better way of doing this rather than just saying $4 billion is what we're going to do. I represent manufacturers in the chemical, pharmaceutical, flavor, and fragrance industries uh, and some, some refiners. And by far and away, one of the top issues always impacting them is the high cost of electricity. We use a lot of electricity. Uh, we use a lot of natural gas to run our processes. One of the reasons why New Jersey's manufacturing base has been decimated over the last 10, 15 years is simply because our rates are too high. For the manufacturers that I represent, we are the eighth most expensive state in the country for electricity, about 60% above the national average. Capital moves, investment picks its best place. And when rates are as high as they are in New Jersey, it's natural to assume that it's part of the reason driving that investment somewhere else. In the commercial industrial area in New Jersey, we represent about 60% of all the megawatts used in New Jersey. That's a significant amount of power that's being consumed. It's also a bad thing that power rates are so high. So I'm really pleased to, uh, to be here with this August coalition. And folks, it's nice to join with you on a, on a, a similar side of an issue. And uh, I'm pleased to represent my group here. Thank you. Thank you, Hal. Um, now we're going to hear from Dina Jaworska Matola from New Jersey Citizen Action. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm the director of organizing and programs at New Jersey Citizen Action. And our organization is a statewide coalition of 120 groups and over 100,000 low and moderate income families across the state. Um, and we're here today and, and part of this coalition because we are very concerned about $8 billion in rate increases. Um, but what I really wanted to, you know, it's been, this has been a very difficult, the last five years have been a very difficult time for the people that we represent. And Superstorm Sandy represented just a, a, a kind of like salt in the wound situation where those who are already struggling financially were struggling, have been struggling even more because of the storm. So. What we wanted to say today is just that it's ironic that the same 
reason that the utilities are using to justify an $8 billion rate hike is, the, is also the, 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 situ the problem that's making um, our members struggle even more. And that's, um, you know, it's, it's $8 billion is a lot of money, and that's not the only problem. The problem that we really want to highlight today is that the utilities are using the storm as an excuse to um, call for a circumvent or a runaround on the current traditional rate making process in the state. And um, they're looking for uh, a way to, for the BPU to, to weaken the BPU, dismantle the protections that are there for consumers, and to really weaken the process that's in place to protect consumers. And so um, today we're calling on the governor, the legislature, and the BPU to reject all these different proposals that the utilities have brought forward that would really weaken the BPU's hands and you know really weaken their ability to scrutinize the, the rate increases that are coming in. Um, without the traditional rate making process, which really forces the utility companies to open up their books um, and bring facts forward, really what's left uh, for the BPU to use to evaluate the proposals that are coming in? Not a whole lot. They're, they're neither gonna have the opportunity nor the information they need to protect the rate payers. And at the end of the day, our concern is that, um, that politics will be guiding the decisions more than the facts. And so um, we think it's really important that the governor and the administration step in to reject any of the proposals that would really do an end run around traditional rate making. Thank you. Thank you, Dina. Uh, we're now gonna hear from Steve Goldenberg, who represents uh, large commercial energy users the New Jersey Large Energy Users Coalition. Thanks, Ed. Uh, I'm an attorney with Fox Rothschild. I apologize for being the attorney on the panel. Um, the New Jersey Large Energy Users Coalition formed about a dozen years ago, uh, largely to litigate rate cases and some of the regulatory proceedings that are convened before the Board of Public Utilities. So the perspective that I and my group would bring to this uh, this conference today and to the uh, panel is the in the trench uh, experience in dealing with how the Board of Public Utilities regulates utilities and addresses stresses and strains like you've seen with Superstorm Sandy. Uh, back in the day, if I look back now, they, they appear to be the good old days, would litigate a utility rate case that was for 50, a $50 million increase. A uh, $100 million increase was deemed to be extraordinarily large. Uh, so in that respect, Superstorm Sandy is clearly a game changer. Uh, you have uh, on the table a listing of the various proposals that are now pending either before the Board of Public Utilities, uh, litigated as rate cases, uh, or in the legislature, and you're looking at $8 billion on the table. Uh, I jokingly tell clients I now only accept billion dollar cases while others need not apply, uh, but it's really not funny. Uh, and there is a question, and I agree with Dina, that there, there is an issue of what is truly needed and what becomes opportunism. Uh, the need we agree with, the opportunism we will oppose to the end. Um, we are not the Just Say No Coalition. Uh, we've all said it, we're all going to continue to say it. We are not here to say we shouldn't do anything. Uh, I'm a resident of the shore, I know what happened on the shore. And our members certainly felt it, and we all felt it personally, and we don't want to see that happen again. But what we also don't want to see is abuse of ratepayers, abuse of the types of people that I represent, abuse of the people who are standing behind me, all of whom have their own needs, whether it's a business that has high bills, that makes it less competitive, that requires it to fire employees or to relocate to other states, or people who have to choose between paying a utility bill and buying medicine. We're all affected by this. You should not leave here today with the impression that the Board of Public Utilities in the state are not taking care of this. Uh, as a result of Hurricane Irene, the Board of Public Utilities conducted an extensive investigation of that hurricane and its effects on the state. Uh, obviously, we had Superstorm Sandy as an intervening event. But the board came out with an order in January that contained an extensive list of to-dos for each of the state's electric and gas utilities, asking them to take a very close look at their infrastructure, to decide what's truly necessary, uh, what's cost-effective. Cost-benefit analysis was a critical component of what the board ordered the utilities to do. And they gave them six months to do their homework assignment. 
It was barely three weeks later that Public Service introduced the Energy Strong proposal, which largely ignores a lot of what they were ordered to do by the Board of Public Utilities. It's an amorphous request. Uh, there is zero cost-benefit analysis, and there are a lot of things that we can get into that I won't get too deeply involved in the rate-making aspects, but they're very unfriendly uh, to ratepayers, but very pro-shareholder. Guaranteed rates of return, what we call single-issue rate-making that prevents the board from taking a comprehensive look at the utility, its investments, its financial profile, and to determine whether the return on equity that they seek under these proposals is appropriate in current market circumstances. Uh, these things are ongoing. And what public service has done uh, was, uh, I should say that the BPU initially rebuffed, rebuffed the application. They've now gone out, and uh, you'll see in today's paper, 38 towns have have supported this. The reason for that is what they tell you is we need to do the infrastructure, we agree on that. We're going to hire 5,800 people, we're going to have economic development in the state, and it isn't going to increase your rates. Four billion dollars, when was the last time anybody spent that and it didn't increase rates? Uh, you need to get the entire story, and uh, one of the uh, proposals of this uh, coalition is to get out the complete story so that the regulators and the state can make informed decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we're now going to hear from Jen Kim, the State Director for the New Jersey Public Interest Research Group. Thanks, Ed. Hi, my name is Jen Kim. I'm the State Director for NJ Perg. NJ Perg is a statewide consumer group that works on behalf of citizen members across the state to stand up to powerful special interests. Um, and we're here today very excited to be a part of this coalition um, for affordable power. Uh, we believe that the utility companies in New Jersey have failed to meet some basic expectations for service. So after Hurricane Irene, uh, over 500,000 customers were without power. After the falling ice storm, over 600,000. And after Sandy, nearly 3 million were left powerless. And ironically, we think the utility companies have proven to be powerless by not recognizing that these, new, uh, that these extreme weather patterns are the new normal. And a basic requirement for the utility companies, we think, should be to do what uh, consumers do every day, which is be prepared. So I keep a flashlight in my house and candles and canned foods um, in case the storm is coming. And, uh, you know, I didn't put in a special $4 billion proposal for the candles. It's part of everyday life. So from Hurricane Irene to Superstorm Sandy, we think the utilities have neglected to see the big picture and prioritize upgrades that will improve reliability, um, increase response time, and improve communication with customers. And these are simply basic expectations they have failed to meet. And while we fully support investments that are smart and improve New Jersey's aging infrastructure and, and um, improves maintenance in and around power lines, we don't support the utility's attempt to overcharge consumers for work they should have already been doing, either because it's a basic expectation of the utility company or because the BPU has ordered them to do so. So any proposal from the utilities needs to be fully examined for effectiveness and cost. <clears throat> and the public is relying on Governor Christie and the BPU to continue to stand up for them in the wake of Superstorm Sandy and make sure that any proposals from the utilities do just that. So we're excited to see what is coming and um, we look forward to working with the Coalition for Affordable Power to make sure that consumers are getting just that. Great. Thank we you. have two more speakers who will make brief remarks and then we'll open it up for questions. We have Corinne Horowitz from the New Jersey Main Street Alliance, a coalition of hundreds of small business owners. Hi, thanks. Um, so my name is Karen Horowitz, I'm with NJCA and the New Jersey Main Street Alliance, uh, like I've said, it, an advocacy network of 1,400 small businesses and sole proprietors across the state. And every day I meet with members and talk to small business owners who are struggling to survive and being squeezed in all directions. From rising healthcare costs to new fees to thousands of dollars and, and uh, deposits for gas and electric bills and, and rising utilities, it seems that small business owners in the state cannot catch a break. Costs are going up and profit margins are shrinking. Besides the uncertainty of rising costs, the utilities themselves are at enormous expense, especially in the summer, challenging the success of small businesses and preventing them, pre preventing them from being able to grow and create jobs. Needless to say, um, uh, mom and pop businesses run a very tight uh, profit margin. They watch their pennies and even the smallest increases when added up matter. That's why we are shocked to learn that the rate increases pending would reap a guaranteed 10% return on investment. 
We want Governor Christie to understand how seriously small businesses will be affected by this increase and reject any proposal from the legislator or the BPU um, that would sidestep the traditional review, conduct, uh, traditional review conducted by the BPU. Governor Christie knows that small businesses have to keep their costs down. <coughs> that is why we are relying on him to ensure that BPU does its job and scrutinizes every rate increase that New Jersey utility companies request and stop this rash attempt to circumvent a full, re a full, a full review on the rate increase process. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, of course, last but not least, is oh. Mayor Ellen Askin, uh, AARP's chief legislative advocate and former state president to talk about uh, how utility costs impact our members. Hello, everyone. Uh, this morning, uh, I saw in the newspaper that one of the largest utilities in the state uh, said that you have $2.1 million customers in uh, 1.2 million customers in New Jersey. Well, they should be aware that 1.3 million of them are members of AARP, and that's who I'm here today to represent in this coalition. Uh, we don't object to increases that are fair and reasonable. But we do object to increases that are based on the fact that for years and years, the utilities have not been upgrading the system and have not uh, done anything to avoid some of the terrible things we've seen in the last few months. We would ask that they dip into corporate profits and to maybe make their shareholders not receive as much in dividends than to look at us, the bill payers, as ATM machines, which we will end up being if the BPU uh, approves this $8 billion increase in costs for ratepayers. Governor Christie keeps talking about having us share in the sacrifices that must be made. Well, we want the utility companies to also share in this sacrifice instead of looking to us. Do you know a rate increase is tantamount to a tax increase? And we're tired of taxes because we have the highest property taxes in the nation. And with all the proposals that are on the table, we are gradually inching up to become number one in utility costs in the nation. We are being bled dry. We cannot afford any more unreasonable rate increases. And we are delighted that this coalition, which we don't always agree with, are with us on this to make utilities cost affordable for all New Jerseyans. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn, and thank you, everyone. Um, that concludes our prepared remarks. We're happy to take questions from the press. If anyone has any questions, um, I just will add. Yes, sir. Some of the, the, the groups, I mean, some of the utilities have talked about, um, you know, that by spending this money, they'll make it more reliable, and that's an important um, asset to attracting businesses, even though they might have higher costs. Yeah, I wish they'd have thought of that about a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> Had they made their grid more reliable about a year ago? Would you step up to the mic? I'm sorry. Thanks. And I guess that gets to the nub of the problem. For a hundred years, the rate making structure in New Jersey has allowed the monopolies to collect from the rate payers a certain amount of money. Part of that money was supposed to go to upgrading the system. Clearly, it went somewhere else because the system was not upgraded. So the question really is, how much of the utilities uh, own money, rather than additional ratepayers' money, should be going to do this? I like Marilyn's comment about we all need to share in this. <clears throat> the way I'm looking at this, monopolies are not sharing anything. They're just getting $4 billion, $8 billion. I even lose track at this point. And then on top of that, they get a guaranteed return on investment of above 10%. Each of the member companies which I represent 
would literally have a field day. They could guarantee to their stockholders a guaranteed 10.3% return. Yes. Yeah, this could be for anyone. Just to talk more about how you say they're getting around the normal way of uh, process. Um, so, uh, as a coalition, and uh, we support what we would characterize as traditional rate making structures, which uh, require uh, a company's rates to be evaluated within the context of a base rate case, which allows um, for uh, an analysis um, of the company's entire set of books, if you will, um, so that we can see uh, how they're spending uh, our money on this side of the system, on this side of the system, and on that side of the system. In this case, uh, we have companies that are coming in. The most recent one is Public Services Energy Strong, asking uh, that uh, we cough up another almost $4 billion through a special fee or surcharge mechanism um, that would be added to the bill. If anybody takes a look at your bill, you'll see that there's all kinds of charges. And the problem with this uh, evaluation of uh, a rate hike proposal through a special fee or a, or a clause is that it really denies us as consumers uh, the ones paying the bill, an opportunity to see the full impact of those uh, of those costs um, on the entire system, and whether or not there might be efficiencies that could be gained in another part um, uh, of the infrastructure, and where we might see costs go down. Um, the other problem is that uh, in this case, uh, the company is requesting a 10% plus rate of return. Um, on an investment through a special fee that has no risk uh, by their proposal. And those profit margins or return on equity rate of return are supposed to be based on risk. Uh, and you get a better picture of risk when you're looking at a traditional rate making structure. It's the most transparent, it's the most accountable. Um, and for any company to suggest that uh, there's a high risk associated with a guaranteed return, uh, we think is uh, is minimally a bad deal for consumers. And what it ends up being is that uh, we're paying uh, excessive rates to provide excessive profits to utility shareholders. Can I add something? Yeah, not like that. Anything else? Anything else from the press? Well, thank you all for coming.